Alright, here we go. We're gonna call up this guy, Eric, I used to know. Some guy I met on one of those, one of those extra sets, you know, and we do the extra work on, uh, you know, popular television shows, have those people walking around in the background. I used to be one of those walk around in the background guys, and, and if you ever want to just meet just the weirdest, freakiest, just the most out of touch people in the world, that you should just go there. They should do a documentary about that shit. They probably already have, but... They should do several more, because there's just a wealth of material in those extra set places. Alright, so here's a dude I met named Eric. And let's see if Eric will play along with our game. Every extra guy, I think, is waiting for, like, a call. They, they think, like, a, someone's going to call and be like, you're perfect for this role with, uh, you know, Kiefer Sutherland or something. And they'll be like, are you ready to work tomorrow? And they'll be like, yes, yes, I am. Hello? Is, hi, is this Eric Mole? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Listen, my name is, uh... My name is Greg Starling, and uh, I got your picture uh, from Central Casting, and I was just wondering if you're available to maybe do some some uh, fitting, and, and we might want to fit you up and have you maybe stunt double for um, Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland? Yeah, do you know who Kiefer is? He's a 24, star of 24, handsome man, slightly balding. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, um... When when does that take place? When would you like to? Well, the fitting would the fitting could be uh we it could be any time from five in the morning tomorrow to eleven at night next Wednesday. I mean, you just have to be on call. Be we're really busy. We're tight right now. You just need to be ready at all times to jump into action. Okay, and uh, for what time? What's the time period for tomorrow? Uh. It could be as early as 5 in the morning because we have some people coming in. We have Kiefer himself coming in at 6, and we need to have you out of sight because Kiefer doesn't like to see just regular people inside the uh, wardrobe department when he's in there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it sounds interesting. Um, of course, and, of uh, course it would be, we, we would be paying you. We would be paying you slightly above minimum wage. We'll be giving you nine fifteen an hour. That's big money, and um, and you would be there for the fitting, and then for the actual show, we'll have you jump through. Uh, I don't know if you're afraid of fire, and if uh, can you swim? Oh, uh, no, it doesn't matter. So you can, so we'll put you in a fireproof suit. We'll have you. We're gonna have you in a car. The car is gonna explode, and the car will, will will be on fire because we're gonna put a lot of gasoline on it. You're gonna then jump out of the car and jump into a kiddie pool full of Vaseline. Okay. Um. Yeah, it sounds interesting. What, what? What? Where do you have to be? Where do you have to go for that? Well, it's going to be Gower Studios for the fitting, and we're going to probably shoot it in the uh, Mojave Desert. But of course, we'll we'll arrange a ride for you. We'll have you picked up in a van and taken out to Mojave Desert. Okay. Um. Sir, I don't I don't sense any excitement in your voice. I'm offering you a, a, a your big break, and you're and you're hemming and hawing. What is the, I could easily call eight million other guys who look exactly like you. All right, all right. You said I have a job, and uh, let me see. Uh, okay, wh wh where do I have to show up? What's the location for tomorrow? Uh, sir, do you, I'm surprised you don't know where the Gower Studios are in Hollywood. That's down there right Gower out. Studios. Yeah, Gower Studios, stage 103. It's the stage where Gran Torino, they filmed a short scene from Gran Torino there. I'm surprised you don't know that. Okay. Alright, Gower Studios. Isn't it probably uh, Melrose? Yes, it's kind of close to Melrose. It's 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 actually a lot closer to as you get off on Gower. You can actually get off Gower on on the one hundred and one. Drive down. You're gonna make a right on Templeman, and from Templeman you're gonna you go to the guard. You're gonna say the this time you know we're doing things a little differently because it's kind of we're kind of trying to keep it a secret that we're doing this. So you're gonna tell the guard. Do you have a pen and paper because you're gonna tell the guard a code word. Okay. Yeah, good. The code word is Snagglepuss. 
Johannesburg. Okay. And, like, of course, sir, I wouldn't show up this unless we call you. We could call you at any moment. We could call you at 3 in the morning, and we'd expect you to answer the phone and with a lilt in your voice. Okay. All right, is there a dress code? Do I have to... Uh, this is for a fitting room, right? So I don't have to wear... wear oh, yeah, don't wear anything too heavy. Uh, I just wear... Why don't you just come in your pajamas, because we're not going to use your clothes. Come in something really light, easy to change out of. Your pajamas, slippers, maybe. Maybe it's a light jacket if it's cold. Nothing too heavy because you can be concealing weapons. We're afraid of weapons. We don't like, we don't want you to, we're afraid of regular, uh, you know, people coming in with heavy jackets with lots of pockets because they could hide weapons. But we don't like weapons. We're very okay. afraid of weapons. All right. Do you have any weapons, sir? Um, no, just in for goggles. Goggles could be used as a weapon if you shot them like a rubber man. So, no goggles. Okay. Alright. Okay, sir. Okay, just give me a call. Thanks. Alright. That was fucked up. I shouldn't have done that. I'll have to call him back and tell him not to show up. Hi, this is Eric. My number is 323. Uh, just leave uh, me a message, leave me um, also your phone number and your name and speak clearly. If I don't get back to you, then maybe it wasn't, uh, uh, maybe it didn't get uh, clear enough on the phone. So try again, okay? Thanks. Bye. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Uh, hello, uh, Eric. This is uh, John Katz. Um, I believe you received a phone call from an employee employee, employee of mine. Uh, his name is Glenn Starling. I happened to listen to that phone call, and I found that my employee was extremely rude to you. And um, I came in and fired him after he spoke with you that, in that manner, and I was very insulted by it. And I'm very, very sorry. I apologize to you at the, from the bottom of my heart. The fitting has been moved to a, a month from now, and uh, we will contact you if we could use your services uh, at least a week in advance and give you a precise time when to show up. I am very sorry for the treatment you received from the man I just fired. He left the office weeping and threatening to commit suicide, so I hope that that gives you some satisfaction knowing that his life has been destroyed for making that rude phone call to you. And uh, I apologize once again, and we will be in contact with you. You're a very talented man. Bye-bye. Now I feel better. <laughs> See, I am a good guy after all.